This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video as an introduction to tolerance stacking and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing for the Mechanical Design 2 class at Southern Maine Community College. I'm going to start with a very simple part. And what I've done is represented the part three times, with the only difference being the feature control frame that controls the position of that small hole at the top of this plate. So we simply have a small plate, two holes in it. And here's the issue. Each of the holes has a tolerance, of course, for its size. The small hole has a positional tolerance. The large hole has a perpendicular tolerance. The large hole acts as datum B for the small hole's position. And the positional tolerance, I mean, sorry, the perpendicularity tolerance for B is to A, which is the primary datum on the back surface. So that positional tolerance allows us to move that hole 0.2 millimeters in diameter that's the size and shape of the tolerance zone with reference to A as a primary and B as a secondary datum. The problem with tolerances comes when you start stacking up the effects of both size and position tolerance. When you want to make sure, for instance, that the wall thickness between the holes meets a certain minimum amount. So what I'm looking for right now is what is the distance from that hole to that hole as far as that wall thickness goes. The simple way to do this would be to start and say, well, we know how far apart they are. They're 10 millimeters. Now, that's a basic dimension. But that 10 millimeters is the center to center distance. If we subtract the radius of the small hole, the distance from the center to the edge of the hole, from 10, and then subtract the radius of the large hole, which is the distance from the center of that hole to its edge, that would leave us with the distance. That would be simple if the numbers didn't have tolerances and if there were no positional tolerance. But what happens to that range, that distance right there, when the holes are made at different sizes and one of them is permitted to move? To solve this, I'm going to have you use a um, little chart that I put together. But I, I don't really want you to memorize the chart so much as I want you to apply the logic. And the logic here is that you start by doing exactly what I said. You take the center to center distance here and you indicate what that would be at maximum or what it would be at minimum as far as the distance goes. We're going to start with maximum first and the number we're going to put there is always going to be 10. In this case that is the uh, basic dimension between them so we're going to start with a 10. From there we'll take radius 1 which is a small hole, subtract it, we'll have a result. We'll take radius 2 which is a large hole, subtract it, we'll have a result. Now we have to take into account the tolerance of position, in this case it's 0.2, subtract that and get a result. Then we have to take the uh, bonus tolerance, if there is one, take that into account to get another result, and then we're going to take into account a mobility tolerance if there is one. In the first situation here, we have, regardless of feature size, there is no max material condition modifier, there's no least material condition modifier. So that positional tolerance of 0.2 applies no matter how big we make that hole. In the second situation, we've added the max material condition modifier to the hole's position, which means if we stay away from max material condition, if we make the hole at 3.6, for instance, we get a bonus tolerance, which is equal to the difference between max material condition and how large we made the hole. At least material condition, that's an additional tolerance of 0.2, so that number would change from 0.2 to 0.4. Still, however, a cylindrical tolerance zone because it's got the diameter symbol here. So the zone is a straw-like shape. The axis of the hole has to fit inside. In the third situation, in addition to having a bonus tolerance on position, we've added a mobility tolerance on the uh, secondary datum, allowing that secondary datum to be measured in such a way that the whole part can shift. So what is often referred to as datum shift and sometimes referred to as datum mobility is identified with the letter M. And each of these is going to open up enough tolerance that that's going to change the relative size of that little wall thickness. Well, let's go over and do the math based on the drawing. So here's our SOLIDWORKS drawing. In this case, I've got the table filled in. And we'll go down through, and I'll, I'll explain what each one of these things does. Before doing that, let's go over to uh, an indication of how you would measure this. What I've got here is the part itself, which is that checkerboard pattern. It's sitting on a functional gauge. The functional gauge consists of a flat surface that's going to simulate datum A. It also consists of a pin made at maximum material condition that's going to simulate datum B. This is going to take care of one of our circumstances, one of our situations. It's got another pin representing the hole at virtual condition. And if you take a look the way this is made right now, 
there's a little bit of a gap here, but the hole just touches the pin on the bottom. The bottom pin completely fills the hole. If that part fits over there, we've met the positional tolerance. So let's go back and do the, uh, do the calculations. In the first place, we start by uh, indicating the center to center to distance, which I have labeled right here. So in the case of the maximum, we'll do first the center to center distance is 10. Then we subtract that first radius. That first radius is 1.7 because at max material condition, the hole would be 3.4. 3.4 divided by 2 is 1.7. Max material condition, when the holes are as small as possible, is when we'll have the largest wall thickness. And you notice down here what I've actually indicated is the maximum distance and the minimum distance. These are not really max and minimum, I mean max and least material condition calculations. It's the maximum distance between the whole walls and the minimum distance. We're going to start with 10 in both cases. So radius 1 in the max distance case is half of the maximum material condition size of that first hole. The result when we subtract it is 8.3 millimeters. We go to the second radius down here. We also need to take the distance again from here to here when the hole is at its max material condition, which is going to be the radius represented by the 10. So we'll subtract radius 2, which is 5, from 8.3, and now we have 3.3. In a perfect world, that would be the wall thickness. However, it's also possible for that small hole to move up or down from its exact location represented by that basic um, dimension of 10. If it moves up, the wall thickness gets larger. If it moves down, the wall thickness gets smaller. So we're going to move it up to get that maximum thickness. And when we do move it up, we have to move it half of the tolerance because that tolerance is a circular or a cylindrical shape. So the cylinder sits right at the perfect location of the center. So the center of the hole where it starts out from the from uh, the perfect location can go up 0.1 or it can go down 0.1. If it goes up 0.1 that wall gets thicker so we come down and add the 0.1 to the resultant wall thickness of 3.3. So if this hole does shift up we get a result of 3.4. There's no bonus tolerance because there's no max material condition modifier here or least material condition modifier here. So the result is still 3.4 and there's no mobility or datum shift allowance because there's no letter M at the end of the uh, feature control frame. So the result is that that distance is going to be 3.4 at its maximum. It cannot be th larger than 3.4. Now we go over to the minimum distance that could be. Start off the same with the basic dimension between the two centers. But the radius that we're going to subtract is not going to be the radius at max material condition. It'll be the radius at least material condition when the hole is as large as it can go because that'll give us the smallest wall thickness. 3.6 divided by 2 is 1.8, so we're going to subtract 1.8 and have 8.2 as the distance or the result. The large hole, the same thing. We have to take the radius of the hole at its largest dimension. 10.4 is its largest dimension. Divide by 2, you get 5.2. So when we subtract 5.2 from 8.2, we now have a resultant wall thickness of 3. If there were no bonus tolerance, I mean, I'm sorry, if there were no positional tolerance, we'd be done right now. But there is a positional tolerance. It permits that hole to go up or down by 0.1 because the shape of that tolerance zone is circular. In this case, moving it down would get it closer to the other hole and leave that wall thinner. So now, instead of adding that, we're going to subtract it because the movement of the hole is going to be down. Subtracting 0.1 from 3.0 gives us 2.9. No bonus tolerance, still 2.9. No mobility or shift, still 2.9. So in, these, in this circumstance right here, the maximum wall thickness here, 3.4. The minimum wall thickness, 2.9. Now we can verify that using SOLIDWORKS, and we'll do that in just a second, but I'm going to move on to the next one. So now we go to our second situation, and the only thing we've added is a maximum material condition modifier. We're going to go through this process again, but if we look over at the maximum size, because that's a maximum material condition modifier, nothing in this column is going to change. The center to center distance is still 10. Radius 1 is still the radius at max material condition, so we'll subtract 1.7. Radius 2 is still the radius at max material condition, so we'll subtract 5. There's still a tolerance of position of plus 0.1. The result is still 3.4. No bonus. Well, there can't be a bonus, even though there's a bonus tolerance permitted, because we're making this at max material condition. And at maximum material condition, you don't get a bonus tolerance. You have to adhere to the tolerance given in the feature control frame. So nothing changes in this column. So even with that change in the feature control frame, 
the wall thickness between the two holes is still a maximum of 3.4 millimeters. Where there is a change, however, is over in the minimum distance. We start off the same way, distance center to center, half of the hole size at its least material condition, negative 1.8, half of the big hole size at its least material condition was negative 5.2, leaves us with 3. The tolerance of position allows a movement of 0.1, so we'll subtract that and get 2.9, exactly the same result we got over here. Now, however, we have a bonus tolerance. The bonus is the difference between the least material condition size of 3.6 and the maximum material condition size of 3.4. We don't add all of that bonus, however, because all that does is increases the size of the diameter of the tolerance zone. The diameter of the tolerance zone is centered on the hole, so what it adds for us is not 0.2, but it gives us an additional 0.1 movement in either direction. So the bonus, since what we're trying to do is to find the, the minimum size, we're going to take the bonus as the hole moves down. So we'll subtract 0.1 from 2.9, we get 2.8. There's no mobility or shift identified in the last position. As a result, the minimum size is 2.8. So the only difference between these two conditions is that the minimum distance between the hole sizes is going to be smaller by half of the difference between max material and least material condition of that small hole. Now we come to the third situation. In the third situation, the only thing that's changed is we've added a mobility modifier. It's maximum material position modifier, but it's applied to the datum. So Bill Tandler would call that a mobility modifier. Um, Alan Krilikowski would call it a datum shift. In either case, they mean the same thing. What they mean is that when you make the tooling to, to check this, you can make your gauge at max material condition. Now, when you make the gauge at max material condition, and now I'm going to go back and take a look at our assembly. That gauge at maximum material condition means that if the hole in the part itself is larger than it needs to be, if it goes toward least material condition, then that part is free to sort of move around. So what I'm going to do is to go and change this from what it is right now to least material condition with a datum shift. So when I do that, you'll notice that the holes change a little bit. I'm going to look right at it. Now this part is free to move a little bit and this is why Krilikowski calls it a datum shift. So right now you can see that because of the size of that hole this part can go up, this part can go down. Now what that allows us to do is to increase the distance between the two holes because that datum can shift. And what we can do is increase it. This is a center to center distance we're going to worry about but if you take that gap right there half of that gap is going to be applied to the center in both directions. Now if we go back to the drawing and apply that, when we get down to the point where we have a 2.8 distance as a minimum wall thickness from here to here, we now can take into account mobility. Now the mobility in this case is going to be how much shift is permitted when the hole is manufactured at maximum material condition, I mean sorry, when the hole is manufactured at least material condition. So you look at the two differences here. The hole at least material condition is 10.4, at max material condition it's 10.0. So the movement from the center would be 0.2. Come down here and subtract that 0.2 from the 2.8. We now have a minimum distance of 2.6. So if what I needed was to make sure from a strength point of view that that wall thickness never dropped below 2.7 for instance, no problem putting out this frame on here. A good idea to put this frame because it gives the person manufacturing it a little more room and it still gives me what I'm after so it's a less expensive part that functions the same way but I would not want to add the shift of the mobility control because now that wall thickness drops below the 2.6. Now this is a fairly simple part. In order to uh, determine on a more complex part the results of the uh, tolerance stacking you would need to go through this analysis for each of the features that have tolerances applied to them. I'll just make another point about the use of this letter and not, let, not the use of this letter. If the letter M is not there, the tooling you have to make, if this is the situation you have or that's the situation you have, the tooling you'd have to make to measure this would have to have a pin that was always at the same size that the hole was manufactured. In other words, we couldn't use a fixed functional gauge with a pin that's max material condition size. What we would have to do instead 
is to have an expandable pin or an expandable mandrel of some kind design tooling that would center the hole on the pin so that the centers themselves couldn't move. The other thing to point out is the size of that pin is really its virtual size. We use max material condition size in this case without having to add any kind of uh, additional tolerance because there is a zero tolerance at, max, at maximum material condition for that hole. So if we make the pin at max material condition, we don't have to worry about anything else. We don't have to take anything else away because of uh, any variation from perpendicularity. This is yet another reason why um, using controls that indicate zero tolerance at max material condition uh, is becoming more widespread in addition to the fact that it actually gives you a bigger range of possible sizes for, under, for the manufacturing of the part. So that's um, just another argument for using the zero at max material condition modifier.